and support Amazon workers who are fighting really for their freedom, if you want to look at it that way, fighting to be able to form a union. Yeah, yeah. This is important work, and it has huge implications all around this country. So thank you for being here, for all of your supporter, supporters, for the Amazon workers who are here. And we have invited Reverend Dr. William J. Barber, who is the co-chair for the Poor People's Campaign, to speak in just a few moments. But let's continue with some great music to keep us going right now. Reverend Dr. All right, I need you to help me on this one because there's going to be a break in this song. And so when I get there, I'm going to say everybody's got a right to live. And you say to live. Come on, let me hear you. Everybody's got a right to dream. to dream. Everybody's got a right to love. Everybody's got a right to learn. All right. Well, now everybody's got a right to live a singing. Everybody's got a right to live. Don't you let this campaign fail. Get those yes votes in the mail. Singing, everybody's got a right to live. Come on, y'all sing. Everybody's got a right to live. I'm singing, everybody's got a right to live. Don't you let this campaign fail. Get those yes votes in the mail because everybody's got a right to live. Well, we're down in Alabama feeling mighty mad about the fair and living wage that we never had. And that's why we sing the song. Through our vote, we will stay strong because everybody's got a right to live. Everybody! Everybody's got a right to I'm singing Everybody's got a right to live. Don't you let this campaign fail Get those yes votes in the mail Because everybody's got a right to live Well, we're working down at Amazon Feeling mighty mad About the workers' union that we never had. That's why we sing this song. Through our vote, we will stay strong because everybody's got a right to live. Everybody, come on, let's sing. Everybody's got a right. Singing, everybody's got a right to. Please don't let this campaign fail. Get those yes votes in the mail because Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to dream. Everybody's got a right to love. Everybody's got a right to learn. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to dream. Everybody's got a right to love. Everybody's got a right to live. Sing it. delighted to be able to introduce next Mr. Michael Foster. We are not related, but we do have the same last name. But he's a dynamite union organizer that has become one of my good best friends. And I'm about to introduce him now. Michael, would you come forward? Yeah, Mike. How y'all doing this evening? All right, all right. It's great to see everybody's coming out to support the uh, the movement that we have going on right now. Uh, it's beautiful just to see people, how they want to come out and help. And um, 
I got a couple workers here from Amazon, and I want to introduce the first one. The first lady that I'm going to call up is a great leader. Uh, she's... Ready to fight. I'm ready to live. Amazon, Bezos, OMG. He's just horrible. And I'm ready for more wages, better wages. We want better time at work. We want to go to the bathroom at work. How could you work for somebody that's trillion billion? whatever you want to call it. How can you work for them? They don't want you to go to the bathroom. If I go to the bathroom, it's going to take me five minutes to get there. Wow. When I get there, that don't necessarily mean I'm just going to use it and it may take me longer. If I stay gone 15 minutes in the bathroom, which is 20 plus, you know, the five to get there, and then I got to walk another five to get back. So that's 25 minutes. Oh I'm gone from a machine. When I get back, it's a, a note across the scene saying, HR needs to talk to you. I'm like, what did I do? I just went to the bathroom. You get to HR. Well, Linda, you're a time on task. You got 25 minutes away. I was like, well, I just went to the bathroom. Somebody is supposed to come and relieve me while I go to the bathroom. We have an A done light that we cut on. When we cut it on, it's a big machine, a big computer will let them know to go to this machine here or to go to this machine here. They'll walk by, they'll look at it, and they'll let you stand there. And when you go to the bathroom once again, you're going to get fired when you come back. Oh. Okay. I, they took our um, hazardous pay away. Why? Because we have COVID cases every week. Every week. I caught COVID in Amazon. Mama. Mama. They paid me. For two weeks, I was out three weeks. They didn't pay me for the third week. Wow. I said, okay. Upon that, I had to get a second job to make ends meet. I'm in school for nursing. I graduated in uh, June. Great. With that being said, I'm ready to fight. I am tired. I want everybody to hear me. We're in this together. That's right. That's right. All right. If I have to come to Missouri, Cleveland, California, New York, I will. I'm fighting for everybody, not just me. Right. It's not all about me. It's for everybody. That's right. That's right. And I'm ready. We got to fight for our right. Yeah. That's right. All right. All right, Miss Linda. All right. All right, Miss Linda. Fight for. All right, y'all. Y'all just heard from Miss Linda Barnes, a dedicated worker at Amazon. I have another speaker here from Amazon, and uh, his name is uh, Emmett. And I'm, we're going to uh, let Emmett come up right now and let give you a piece of his story. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Come on, Emmett. Um, wow. <laughs> Who would have thought all this would be this big? <laughs> Um, I work for Amazon and I see a lot of people there, a lot of people who are frustrated, a lot of people who are tired, a, a lot of people who have no other option and their conditions aren't what they need to be. It's not the conditions that they deserve. And we have to fight. Well, yes, this is happen at, happening at Amazon today, but it's not just Amazon. It's all the other giants out there, too, who are not treating their workers the way they should be. We have to not settle for what has been given to us, but demand what we deserve. And we cannot sit by and let our fellow man be taken advantage of. There's so much out there for everyone. There's enough for everyone, yet it's not given to us. And that is not right. We cannot continue like this, and we won't continue like this. And America says we will not continue like this. We are in this together, not just in Alabama, but across the country. And we have to continue fighting, 
no matter what happens with this vote, the bell has been rung and it won't stop here. That's right. That's right. It'll That's continue right. from sea to sign a Chinese sea. Right. We will not be, we will not be let down. No, we won't. There's a lot more of us than they expect, and we will not be silent anymore. So thank you. I didn't know that this would be so big. And stepping out here today for the rest of my coworkers um, is an honor, and it's my responsibility. So thank you for all the support. Thank you for helping us change the country. Thank you for what is to come in the future. We couldn't do it with we couldn't do it by ourselves, but together we can. Yeah. So thank you, thank you. That's all I have to say today. <laughs>
uh, Alabama has the worst voting laws. In fact, it was the Shelby case that started here that gutted the Voting Rights Act. It's important that we understand the context is the context. And one of the things we're coming here today is to say to, to Jeff uh, Bezos and to the, the bosses over at the Amazon plant, listen, we told Jeff Clark to call off the dogs on Selma. We need you to call off these union busting dogs. Yes, yes. We need you to call off these union busting people that you have hired that are trying to stop people from voting. If it's an insult anywhere, it's surely an insult in Alabama uh -huh. to literally try to lie and undermine people's right to vote, right? But I also want you to know that we know this. This is something we know, that strengthening the labor movement in the South is critical to any effort to transform this country. You cannot transform America and bring healing to America until you transform labor in the South and unions are essential for poor and low wealth working people to build and demonstrate power. Secondly, we want people to be very clear, Carol, is that the union fight and the fight for voting rights and the fight against voter suppression is the same fight. That's right. uh -huh. Because all of those fights are fights to bring black white, brown, Asian, native, and poor and low wealth people together in the South. And one third of all poor people live in the South. Poor and low wealth in the South. One third of all poor and low wealth white people live in the South. In his book, uh, The Strange Career of Jim Crow, uh, the historian C. Van Woodard noted that segregation, let me teach you a little history and come to this moment, was really segregation was a political strategy employed by the wealthy interests of the South to keep the Southern masses of black and white folk divided so that they could keep the labor cheap. It wasn't just segregated just because you don't like black people. Tahishi yeah. Coates teaches us that race is the child of racism. Racism comes first. And what racism is at its core is not just a hatred for black people, but it's a hatred of humanity, it is a, it, and, and it is an economic strategy yeah. to keep people divided so that a few can have all they want. You got to understand, you cannot have a conversation about racial justice without talking about economic justice. You can't have a conversation about stopping voter suppression without stopping union busting right. because they come from the same core. That's why 56 years, 56 years ago this week, this week, 56 years ago, at the end of the Selma to Montgomery march, guess what? Dr. King connected the fight for voting rights and the fight for labor rights. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't talk about yeah. that. Yeah. They think Selma was just about voting rights. Right. But when Dr. King got to Montgomery, stood on those steps, this is what he said. The threat of the free exercise of the ballot by the Negro and white masses is what created a segregated society. This is what happened when the Negro and white masses of the South threatened to unite and build a great society, a society where greed and poverty would be done away with. The battle to suppress the vote and the battle to suppress labor rights has been the tactic used by the Southern white aristocracy to hold on to their money. And it's still true. The same money that's behind voter suppression is behind blocking labor rights. And we need to understand that. And so this is the first viable attempt to form a union at Amazon in the United States. You all are first, just like those folk were first across that bridge. This is not just Bessemer, this is the world. Bessemer is not ourselves. Huh. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. This is the first attempt in, in the Amazon, in the United States, to unionize. And 6,000 of you have been called to mail in your ballots. And the National Labor Relations Board said this has to happen. They can't block it. They, if they, they're trying to suppress it, but the only way they can block it is you don't vote. Mm -hmm. Listen now. The only way, right? And um, 
I want to thank the Retail Wholesale and Department Store Union and, and all of you who are here. Now, here's what's at stake. All the workers at the Amazon plant and any plant that's not unionized, but let's talk about this one, are at will employees. Means they can be fired at the wheel of the boss, no just cause. But if you have a union, you become just cause employee. You shift. Right now you're at will. When the union, it becomes just cause. They have to have a just cause in order to fire them. Furthermore, you can call on the union to help mediate and file charges on behalf of the worker. Now, Amazon said last year, and I, I've got to talk about this, because some folk not going to like it, but, you know, so what? Uh, <laughs> I'm too old to lie now. And uh, Jeff Beso, Bezos last year said he was concerned about Black Lives Matter. Uh -huh. That's what he said. Uh -huh. And to show his concern, he said he was going to give $10 million to Black organizations. Trump chain. Yeah. Yeah. And he was going to organize up groups to give some millions of dollars to organizations. I want to say today that Amazon doesn't care about black lives if you give Trump chains to black organizations, but then block union and labor rights for the workers right here in Bessemer. Don't, don't, don't play with us like that. In fact, every national organization that is taking money from Jeff Bezos ought to give it back until he stops the attack on these workers. 85% of the workers at this unit, at this plant are black, 5,800. The rest are white, Latino. But don't play with us. You don't go, you don't, You can't give us 30 pieces of silver. That's it. Huh. That's it. And then undermine and say you care about black folk. You care about black folk, let them have labor rights. Care about black folk, let them have sick leave and health care. You care about black folk, don't pay a woman two weeks when she needs three weeks because she got sick in your plant. Yes. Jeff Bezos has seen his personal wealth skyrocket from $113 billion to $189 billion during COVID. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Here's what that means. Eight million more poor people went into poverty during COVID. But Jeff Bezos made money. Billionaires made a trillion and a half dollars during COVID. You're right. Trillion and a half dollars during COVID. 20,000 Amazon employees got COVID by October of 2020. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what the company did? This company that claims, and I'm through, this company that claims that it needs, it cares so much, they cut hazard pay while they were increasing the hourly work. Now, we have, we have a phrase for that. I'm a preacher, but we have a phrase for that. And, I, and Jesus used the word, so I can use it. That's a damn shame. That same thing Jesus said to that fig tree, yeah, yeah. when that fig tree was pr putting on like it was a fig tree that wasn't producing any figs, yeah. Jesus said, I damn you, because you're putting on. To, to say you care about folk and, and, and 20,000 of your employees catch COVID, and then you give them a little bit of hazard pay and then as soon as folk not watching, you take it back yeah, yeah. while at the same time you're increasing their work. And that would have never happened if you had the union. But not only that, Amazon has tried to do everything they could. They send mass text messages out. Y'all need to know this in the nation. You know, we mad about what Trump did with text message. You all see what Amazon doing. Huh? They send messages out with lies, uh -huh. claim it's going to cost jobs. Uh -huh. Then they make the workers go to classes, and then the instructors try to scare the workers. And then when the workers don't know the truth and stand up and say, no, that's not true, they call them to the front of the class and take a picture of their badge, uh -huh. their worker. Uh -huh. That's what's happening right here uh -huh. in Alabama. Uh -huh. And Alabama already knows that. That's the kind of foolishness they did back in the days of the civil rights movement, intimidation. And then lastly, 19 workers, as I said, have died. The workers need a union and a contract. The movement doesn't end with March 29th. The movement gets another spark. Truth of the matter is, you win this battle here, it opens up the whole South. Amen. You are going to win. <laughs> and you win here, it's going to be just as big as when they won going across that bridge. 
because it's going to open up the whole conversation again and the whole action around connecting the battle against racism and the battle against denying people labor rights and union. So you are here today, a part of a movement that Dr. King foresaw 56 years ago. When he said it, he said it on those out on that step so that, that whenever we figure out that the whole goal of racism is to keep the poor white masses and poor black masses and brown masses separated. And if we figure out, as you are doing here, that we aren't going to be separated anymore and you win, this is the kind of fusion coalition that can change the South. It did it before yeah, yes. and it can do it again. And what you are doing here is showing the nation how to build the kind of power that's necessary to raise the 140 million poor and low wealth people up out of poverty for real, for real. And to get the 87 million people health care. This is a part of America's third reconstruction. Yes. Yes. You are not just workers in a small plant in Bessemer. Uh -huh. Nobody really knew the name of Selma 56 years ago. That's right. Nobody didn't really know it. But when God got through, they, when the people got through, when they organized black and white and brown together, and they wouldn't let anything turn them back, and they won. Ever since then and until the end of time, forever and a day, people know the name Selma. You winning, people will know the name Bessemer and the Bessemer 6,000. And your name will give people courage to fight all over this country. And if when we change the South, we change the nation. Yes, we will. You want healing to come? Yes. Establish justice in right the here. South. Right here. Right here. And then we can be insured of domestic tranquility. So I just wanted to come to stand with you, not to talk for you, but to stand with you and to help the nation to understand, to say to the nation, this is a national issue. Yes. It just happens to be located once again in the heart of the South, of the South. in Alabama. Yes, sir. Alabama, you did it before. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. They yeah. tried. They they tried to rock your boat with 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 with, with officers on horseback. Uh huh. But you did it before. Yeah. They tried to stop you with dogs. Don't you see? But you did it before. Yeah. They shot some of you, but you did it before. Listen, listen. Uh, they had a governor that said separate segregation yesterday, the day and the mod did it before. Yeah. Jeff Bezos really ain't your problem because you face worse. Yeah. Like yeah. David in the Bible, you've already faced the bears and the lion. A, a, a Goliath ain't really that much because no matter how big a man is, he ain't stronger than a lion That's right. or a bear. That's right. So you've already proven what you can do. All you need to do is just do it one more time. Yeah. God bless you. Amen. I understand, Carol, we going to the plant, right? Yeah, no, now, we, we? we got a little more to, to do. Okay, I, I mean, after, after all of this. After all this. That's right. Okay, That's right. well. I'm about to put him on the spot because he didn't know I was going to ask him to come up. But I do want to invite our Senator Doug Jones to come up and say some words. Thank you. I am so happy to be back here with my old friend, Reverend Barber. But also home. This is my stomping grounds. I grew up in Fairfield. And what people out there in the country don't fully under, uh, understand and appreciate is that while we're looking to rebuild unions here, this place was born of unions. Yes, this place was yeah. born with organized labor, whether it was the steel mills or the coal miners. They were all here in Bessemer, in Fairfield, and Midfield. That's right. And that's where, the, that, that's where these cities and these communities grew. And they had horns that the media <laughs> liked to get in the middle of a former senator. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the, it's, so it's, it's, it's actually fitting that this fight takes place in Bessemer, Alabama. Because I've said so many times, and, and, and Reverend Barber essentially said the same thing. The South has been the place of so many divisions. We gotta be the place of healing. We gotta be the place of unity. 
and there is no better place, there is no better time than standing with our brothers and sisters in unionizing the workers at Amazon. It all starts here, and the sky's the limit. Thank you. Thanks for letting me come. Oh, okay. So I'm going to ask Michael to speak one more time, and then we're going to be going national. In case you don't know, this is being live streamed across the, the nation and the world, and we have Amazon, uh, I'm not Amazon, but uh, union organizers all over the country who, who are in solidarity with the union here, and they are going to be speaking online. So in just a few minutes after Mike, we're going to introduce them. One more time, how y'all doing this evening? Uh, my name is Michael Foster. I am the lead organizer on the ground for the RWDSU, but everybody knows me at Amazon by Big Mike. So um, I just like to state the day that um, this, this event that we're going through right now is one of the biggest events that we have going on in the last 20 or 30 years, this labor fight. Um, these people here in Bessemer, Amazon, has allowed their light to shine across the world to give evidence to the people that's watching that they can do it too. They are showing the encouragement to the people around the world that they don't have to stand for what somebody is just giving them. Uh, these people understand that they need a seat at the table in order to be heard. The people around the world are also noticing that. They're also speaking out. They also want a seat at the table. Um, uh, we at RWDSU have a saying that we don't want a minimum wage. We're looking for a living wage. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're tired of just paying bills. Um, the people has been oppressed for years. Uh, the black and brown people are the only people who has not benefited from being oppressed. This is the thing right now is that the people are not taking this anymore. It is time out. This is a new day and age, and we're not just going to accept the bread from the table. We want some meat, too. Amen? Amen. amen. We want to be able to take a vacation every now and then, if that's okay. Amen. amen. Um, I have people that work in these facilities that's working two jobs. Um, uh, no parents at home to give guidance to the kids because they're trying to keep a roof over their head and food in their belly. And they wonder why the poverty rate is so high. They wonder why crime rate is so high right now, simply because of the wages that we're being dealt with right now. So it's time out for this. So all my hat goes off to all the people at Amazon who's who decided to stand up and to stick out and to allow their light to shine for the world to see. Amen. So that's that's my story for y'all today. And thank y'all for coming out. And now we'll go to Ross Pellis and Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, who will bring on labor leaders with messages of solidarity. And we are on. Good afternoon. This is a, a, an amazing rally. We've just witnessed a rally that has been powerful, that supports 6,000 workers at Amazon. Bessemer is our Selma. Bessemer is our Selma. Good afternoon. I'm Roz Pellis. I'm the strategic advisor for the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, and vice president of Repairs of the Breach. We will continue this afternoon to show our support and all our love for the courageous workers at Amazon. These folks are standing up, they're standing tall, and we are standing with them. We're not behind them. We're holding their hand as we go forward. So we'll continue our Moral Monday. And, and people have said that this is an important campaign and it's important and it cannot be said enough. It's important for so many reasons because it's beyond, this is way beyond Bessemer. This is gonna change the lives of the workers at Amazon, each one. It's gonna change Bessemer. It's gonna change this state of Alabama. It's gonna change this country. This is an opportunity to show that workers can be organized just like they've been organized for years and years. It'll be a chance for Alabama 
to reclaim its role in organizing. You heard a little bit about that history. That history is real. And, and these workers are the first step recently to claim it and to win. That's what this is about. This is about a win. So this is a campaign that's gonna help us all. We are in total solidarity. We are with these workers and we'll use the rest of the afternoon to show that. Uh, we will show that uh, in the true spirit of solidarity, the solidarity that our labor unions have always had and always stand with each other. That's what we're gonna do uh, this afternoon. And so I'm here with my sister, my sister, Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, who is the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, and the executive director of the Cairo Center. And Liz, do you want to talk to us a little bit? And then we'll go on to uh, introduce our amazing labor leaders who understand solidarity forever. Liz? Well, thanks so much, Roz, and, and thanks everybody that is here. Uh, gathered with us online and in person um, for this powerful Moral Monday, uh, where we're calling out this, this Goliath of Amazon with uh, powerful Davids, the 6,000 of Bessemer, as Reverend Barber was saying. Our call to action today uh, is to keep on tuning in, keep on pushing this broadcast out, but also to call our senators call our senators saying that we're in, in strong support, strong solidarity with this Amazon struggle and, and remind those senators that we demand labor rights and we follow the priorities that are in the PRO Act, uh, priorities that connect voting rights and, and the right to organize and, and lift up wages and, uh, and, and really lift up our communities. And so again, uh, you know, if you go to poorpeoplescampaign.org, you can go to our bit.ly link uh, that's on the screen, but please make sure that you do um, push this broadcast out, push the stories and voices of the Amazon workers out, uh, push this message of, of, uh, of Bessemer being the Selma of our day out, um, and, and also call your senators and say, we stand for labor rights, we stand for living wages. We stand for voting rights and we will keep on organizing until we win those all. We have seven powerful uh, labor leaders, national labor leaders with us, uh, showing their strong support for these Amazon workers uh, who, are, who are organizing, who are voting on this union um, and, and showing how we're coming together in a powerful movement um, in many powerful movements uh, for change for the better. Uh, I wanna uh, introduce a, a couple of those and, and we'll keep on going. Um, uh, you know, these leaders represent millions and millions of workers, millions and millions of workers that stand in solidarity with, with these Amazon workers in Bessemer and all across the country who indeed uh, are, are fighting uh, this fight that that really is all of our fight. So the first person I want to introduce is is a, a sister who has been in these struggles on the front lines uh, in this pandemic and and so much before. Um, president of the American Federation of Teachers, uh, Randy Weingarten. Randy, thanks so much for for your solidarity and and we're, we welcome you to to this broadcast right now. Thank you, Liz, and it is so great to be with all of you virtually but I cannot wait for the moment that we are with each of each other together, shoulder to shoulder again, which is what the labor movement does best. Right now, as Reverend Barber said, is a moment of change, a moment when we are here to support the workers in Bessemer, to have a union, to have that freedom, to have those rights, to have decency and respect. It is the new Selma, but more than the new Selma, it is the new Moses across the Nile. It is every single freedom movement we have because if we do not have the freedom to have a decent wage, a decent life, then what are we doing for our families? So all of us are here in support of every single worker in Bessemer, 
every single worker in Amazon to fight for their dignity, their rights, and their respect, and to ensure that in this country we call America, there are real rights to economic freedom and economic wherewithal for every single worker and family in America. We are honored to stand with you, Liz, and we are honored to stand, and I'm honored to stand with all of my compatriots here and colleagues here, but most importantly, we are honored to stand with every worker at Bessemer Amazon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Randy. Uh, those are powerful uh, statement of support and solidarity, and indeed, uh, we will continue to fight. Next, I want to introduce Elizabeth Powell, the Secretary Treasurer of the American Postal Workers Union. Uh, Liz has been in the front lines of, of this fight. As we all know, uh, we, we are continuing to fight for the, for the postal workers and for our post office. And, and thanks so much for the work you're doing and for being here today. Thank you, Liz. From Liz to Liz. I don't know about you all, but I'm fired up and ready to go. And kind of like wish I could be there in Bessemer with the rest of them. So as I give honor to God and a special hello to all of you, so proud today to join Reverend Barber in labor and a show of solidarity with the Amazon workers at the Bessemer warehouse. As they approach this deadline for this historic, historic election, we want them to know that the postal workers stand with them. The struggle for economic and social justice, workers' rights, human rights, voting rights, civil rights, and dignity and respect have never been easy and is a continuing struggle for all of us. So sisters and brothers and working families, do not be deterred from casting your vote and let nobody turn you around. As the call for this rally and Reverend Barber stated, we know that strengthening labor, move, labor movement in the South is critical to any effort to transform this country and that unions are essential for working people. They said, what time is it? The time is now. If not now, then when? So let's keep up the fight to defend and expand labor rights across the nation. Well, when we fight, we win. So onward, my sisters and brothers, onward to those ballot boxes and the postal workers are with you all the way. God bless and thank you. On it, sure thing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you're right. When we fight, we win. And when we fight together, we win. When we bring together labor and community and faith leaders, we win. That's what's happening in Bessemer. And that's what y'all know, because that's your work all over the country. And so I want to introduce two, two more labor leaders, folks who represent tens of thousands and millions of people across this country who understand that your fight is their fight. I want to introduce first my sister, Mary Kay Henry, international president of the Service Employees Union, who's been with us uh, on this Moral Mondays, a media Monday, and who is standing tall with the workers in Bessemer at Amazon. Mary Kay. Thank you so much, Roz Pellis, and to all the leaders of the Poor People's Campaign, and to my sisters and brothers in the American labor movement. We are we are so proud, Bama, and online today with working people who have had it, who are fed up with the way things have been before the pandemic, have understood that everything that we were dealing with in terms of gross inequality has just been exposed by the pandemic, and we're joining together to fight for a better life. The 2 million members of SEIU and the millions more fighting for 15 and a union have a message to the Bessemer workers uh, today. You are courageous, you are fearless, and you are already winning. You have risen up against the world's most powerful corporation owned by the world's richest man, and you're doing it in a state that has a history of siding with corporations over working people. Know this, all of us, millions of us are with you. You've exposed what's wrong with Amazon raking in obscene profit during the pandemic on top of the already obscene profits they were making before, keeping wages low, 
for the majority black, brown, Asian, and white workers in that warehouse in Bessemer, but all across the world, you've made clear the inhumane speed of work in these warehouses. And we know that these issues aren't just in Bessemer. Reverend Barber broke it down for us. This is a national fight. It's an international fight. And today, 40,000 Italian workers walked off the job in a 24-hour strike uh, against Amazon warehouses in Italy, not because of wages, but because of the inhumane and cruel speed up right. of Amazon. So Italian workers stand in solidarity with the Bessemer uh, workers today. And that's what I think is really key. The Bessemer workers are forever changing the debate about whether workers who are underpaid and undervalued ought to have the ability to freely join together in a union and sit down at a bargaining table to bargain a better life without their employer firing them, harassing them, threatening their livelihood, not letting them go to the bathroom, for God's sakes. Those workers who just spoke at the rally in Bessemer made my blood boil. Um, and that's why the service and care workers in SEIU and the Fight for 15 are in this with you together. We can put a real check on corporate power in this nation. We can uproot systemic racism together. We can rewrite the rigged rules so every worker can join a union, no matter what job they do or where they work in this nation and around the world. We can pass the PRO Act that will help strengthen the rules under the NLRA. We can turn the fastest growing jobs when the government invests in care jobs and green infrastructure jobs into union jobs, and we can win $15 an hour for everyone. Thanks so much for the fearlessness and courage of Bessemer workers. You give us all hope that together we can create a better world where working people, no matter what the color of our skin or what language we speak, are respected, protected, and paid. Where all workers can live a good life provide for our families, and make sure that our children can do better than we've done. Thank you so much, Bessemer. You've won by changing the debate, and we're with you as you cast your yes votes that will be counted on March 29th. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. And you're right, we are in this together, and we're showing that unity, the unity across unions, across millions and millions of people, we're showing it today. And we want people who are looking and listening today to also get in this fight, stay in this fight, call your senators, be sure to let them know that you're supporting Amazon workers, be sure to let them know about that you're support for the PRO Act and the fight and, the, and understand that the need, there is a need for $15 for folks in this country. So continue that fight as we support and love these courageous workers who are taking a stand a stand that helps us all be able to stand taller in our communities. So next, I want to invite Lee Saunders, the president of AFSCME, the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, to speak. Lee has been has shown his support forever for workers across all, all industries and has supported his own workers as they have stood up and fought for, for decent wages and power and he's also understood the importance of community, labor, faith, unity to bring about winning in these plants and these offices across the country. So Lee, welcome. Well, thank you, Ross. And on behalf of the 1.4 million members of AFSCME, I really am honored to send this message of solidarity to Amazon employees in Bessemer. And I am truly grateful to Reverend Barber for bringing the power of the Moral Monday movement to the struggle. You know, AFSCME has a long history of organizing in the South, connecting the fight for economic justice to the fight for racial justice, labor justice. It was AFSCME who represented 1,300 black sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, who went on strike in 1968, marching side by side with Dr. King under the famous slogan, I am a man. Still today, the game is too often rigged against working people, especially working people of color, who want nothing more than a fair shake, a seat at the table. 
the way to level the playing field, the way to get a fair share of the value you create is by organizing, 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 and forming a union. Working families know that. They understand the union difference. They know unions strengthen our economy, unions strengthen our communities, and our democracy. But too often, unscrupulous employers stand in the way of workers trying to build power together. You know what I'm talking about? The high-priced union-busting consultants, the flood of anti-union propaganda, even in the bathroom stalls, the threats, the harassment, and the fear-mongering. Let me be clear, and President Biden himself has said this too, the choice to unionize belongs to workers and workers alone, free of coercion, free of intimidation, and free from retaliation. The stakes are high, and the battle lines are clear in this campaign. On one side, you've got one of the richest and most powerful comfort companies on the face of the earth. On the other side are proud and courageous working people seeking a better life for themselves, and their families, insisting on a better, safer working place, demanding, fighting for dignity and respect, fighting for a voice on the job and a seat at that table. There is less than a week left in this campaign, and I know you will keep up that fight, won't you? You're going to keep up that fight. Just like those Memphis sanitation workers, I know you will not be bullied. I know you will not relax, you will not relent. I know you will not flinch, you will not falter. And I promise you, I promise you that AFSCME stands with you every single day. We stand with you in the struggle for labor rights, for civil rights, for human rights. Now let's go out and win. Amen, amen, amen. We are hearing, we're getting excited, we are showing our solidarity. If, if you tuned in at the beginning of this broadcast, we heard that, that Everybody's Got a Right to Live song uh, sung by Thea Musicologist from Alabama, uh, Reverend Dolly, who said, please don't let this campaign fail. Get those yes votes in the mail. And we just heard that from, from Lee Saunders again. Uh, we're, uh, it, it's an honor to be here with everybody. We got three more labor leaders uh, and that I, I want us to be able to introduce right now. Uh, I want to welcome back to Moral Mondays, uh, Sarah Steffens, the Secretary Treasurer of the Communication Workers of America. Sarah, thanks for being here and, and for showing your, your support. Thank you so much. Um, I'm honored to be here with all of you today, too, and also to serve on the steering committee of a Poor People's Campaign. Um, you know, anyone who's been part of a union organizing campaign knows just how much courage it takes to stand up when the person who signs your paycheck starts to threaten you. But most of us can only imagine how it feels to do that when the person that you're up against is one of the richest billionaires on the planet. So to our sisters and brothers and all of our union siblings in Bessemer, thank you for fighting this good fight. Your bravery and your persistence are inspiring our entire labor movement. We love you, we admire you, and we've got your back as long as it takes and one day longer. Let's remind Jeff Bezos there's one thing he can't buy, and that's your union yes vote. Our entire labor movement stands with you, not only in your fight to organize, but also in the larger fight to reform our nation's broken labor law and to protect everyone who organizes for a voice at work. It shouldn't have to be this hard. Union rights are civil rights, and CEOs and shareholders must not be allowed to threaten and intimidate workers who are only asking to exercise their rights under federal law. Um, many people here today have mentioned the PRO Act, which is headed to the U.S. Senate. It strengthens penalties for employers who retaliate against workers who are organizing. The PRO Act gives union members more power to win your first contract, and it protects and expands our greatest tool, the right to strike. So we must hold every senator accountable for supporting it, because working families and workers in Bessemer need this protection more than ever. Every single day of this pandemic, frontline workers, like everyone at Amazon, have put themselves at risk to keep our country running. And we all felt so much gratitude. We hung thank you signs on our front doors. We banked pots and pans and lit candles in the street. But even as we celebrated, 
all of these everyday heroes, too many workers were learning firsthand that their employers value profits more than they value safeguarding workers' lives. And our laws are far too weak when it comes to protecting those who speak out or organize for change. So if we really want to show that we respect our essential workers, we have to start by making sure they have the freedom to join together to improve their workers, their workplaces. And we have to see every worker struggle as our own and understand all our fights as interconnected. What happens in Bessemer affects every single working family in our nation. And your courage lifts up, lifts up every one of us. And when, you union, and when you win, when you win your union, we will still be here as long as it takes and one day longer. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sarah. And, and indeed, I want to remind folks that the call to action for everybody that's tuning in today, in addition to showing our solidarity and our support of the Amazon workers, is to make sure you do, as Sarah was saying, call your senators. Make sure you demand labor rights for all. Make sure you point out that, that, that the priorities in the PRO Act are the priorities that will make America stronger and better. And, and that we in the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, have put forward some priorities, including labor rights, including voting rights, including living wages uh, that, that we need um, to be able to lift from the bottom so everyone can rise. I next wanna introduce uh, Clayola Brown. She's the Civil Rights Director of the American Federation, labor of, uh, American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations, the AFL-CIO, the largest federation of, of, of unions in this, in this country. She's also the president of the A. Philip Randolph Institute and uh, has a, a powerful message for us today. So welcome, thanks so much for being with us. Goodness. Thank you so much, Sister Liz. I appreciate that introduction. I have to get used to hearing all of that acronym when, when uh, being introduced, but today I, I come to you to speak along with and for President Trumka, as well as to say something to you from all the brothers and sisters inside of the six constituent groups of the AFL-CIO. To my old friend, Ross Pellis, it's good to see your face. And it's good to have the opportunity yesterday to talk with you as you bragged about the best of a 6,000 sister. I want to say to everyone that's on this call and the magnitude of the speakers before leaves very little to be said right now. So I'll try and do it in two minutes if I can. The one message that resonated from everyone, from the very first speakers, I mean, Sister Linda Burns was rocking it out from the time she opened up at the mic and continues to do so. So the strength that's there in Bessemer is not a surprise to me when it comes across like that. And of course, Reverend Barber, when he speaks, he doesn't just speak, he teaches. And the lesson that we got from him today was a lesson on dignity, respect, and courage, and that of strength as well. But the dignity piece is what I wanted to share with you this afternoon. A worker in whatever field they want to go to work in, should not be expected to leave their dignity and respect at the plant door. Anytime you go to work, you don't go because you're happy. You go because it is necessity. It's a necessity to live in your family, to provide a living wage for your family, and not to be able to go to the bathroom without being monitored, not to have the pay that will protect you if you're sick. All of those pieces that kept being reiterated by all of the speakers are absolutely at the top of why folks get pissed off and vote the right way. Vote for a union. In this case, RWDSU is a union that is wearing the Amazon Corporation out. That money won't make a difference. Your vote will. And you have to get it in before the deadline gets there. Every time we do something for ourselves, we are doing it not just for ourselves, we're doing it for dignity, we're doing it for respect, we're doing it for humanity, and for the next group of workers that come along so that the battle that they fight will not have to be quite so hard. But look at the power that's at the table. Elise Saunders that is there, representing millions of people, Randy Weingarten that is there, uh, Barry K. Henry who is there, all of these folks, Sarah Nelson who is there, all of these folks representing workers all across America, that's who is on this call this afternoon, saying to the Bessemer 6000, you are important not only for this piece, but for the movement of labor in the South, and we're not leaving the South. 
Come hook them back hook. We're here and ready to rock and roll with you. So on behalf of the six groups, Apollo, APRI, CBTU, Clue, Pride at Work, LACLA, all of the workers of every ethnic group that you can imagine, we are across this nation pulling for you, the best of our 6,000, to pull this piece together and win because you already have. And win, lose, or draw on the deadline, we will be with you in this fight and any fight that comes after this one. So God bless you. We're praying with you. We're praying for you. And there's nothing like a good scrapping at it. And y'all are wearing their behinds out. So proud of you. So proud of you. God bless you and keep on with your struggle. Thanks for having me. Keep on indeed. Keep on. Keep on. So our last labor, labor leader um, uh, is Sarah Nelson, the international president of the Association of Flight Attendants of the CWA. Uh, Sarah, thanks for all the work you're doing and, and for being here to show solidarity with these Amazon workers, this Bessemer 6000, um, as, we, as we lift up this struggle, lift up the Alabama, lift up the South. Reverend Liz Theo Harris, thank you. Thank you, Reverend Barber. Thank you, Roz Pellis. Thank you so much to the Poor People's Campaign for hosting this and for making sure that Amazon workers know that we are with them in Birmingham and Bessemer and all over the world, really. Um, so I had the privilege of being in Bessemer last week, and um, it was a real privilege to go to this union hall, this RWDSU union hall, uh, that Randy Hadley oversees as the local president and Stuart Applebaum was there to support the community uh, when I got there. And, you know, I saw my friend Emmett, who is standing out there, who talked to me and said, as an Amazon worker, as an Amazon part-time worker who was working next to people who was making $3 less than him simply because he's a part-timer and the company was defining that instead of the workers defining their value, he said, it's no way to live. Life is too short to be hating a place where you spend a third of your time. So instead, the workers are joining together and taking your power. You know, I think about this all the time. And the corporate elite, they have money and they have control. But we have the power. And so it was, it was empowering to me to be there with you in your union hall last week and at that Amazon warehouse where Amazon had sent everyone home because of the tornado watch and because the union was there organizing, everyone got paid. You're making a difference in people's lives already. You're claiming your power already. And I saw that mailbox that Amazon put there in violation of labor law, in violation of the instruction from the NLRB, where they are telling people that you have to go vote there and they've got a camera trained on it and their supervisors calling people at home and saying, we didn't see you vote yet. You gotta come and vote tomorrow. And people are thinking, this is my job. I gotta do what my supervisor says. This is undermining voting rights. This is directly connected to the voting right issue in this country right now and all of the efforts to suppress the vote. But you're standing up and you're calling BS on them and you're claiming your own power. And I gotta tell you, I believe you're gonna win but I believe you've already won because what you have sparked in Bessemer, what you have sparked in Birmingham is that we are not gonna sit back and take it anymore. We are not gonna sit back and be in a place where we are unhappy and accept that that has to be the reality. We are not going to accept the fact that Amazon is so disconnected from the workers in Alabama that they would run a national narrative of they are gonna pay $15 an hour when Congress won't meet it. Well, BS, you can't even get an apartment in Birmingham on $15 an hour. And the workers are saying, you're saying that's all we're worth? No, $15 is about lifting the floor so we can raise the roof. And then one of the richest companies in the world, we're going to raise the roof. As Jennifer Bates said in her testimony last week, she said, we're the billionaires. We just don't spend it. You know who that sounds like? That sounds like Mother Jones 100 years ago labor organizing against child labor. And she said, she said, workers produce wealth and build the world's palaces, but they neither use the wealth nor dwell in the palaces. Jennifer Bates also said, we are not robots designed to only live to work. We work to live. 
That sounds a lot like Mother Jones saying, let us take the children away from this God-cursed labor and put them out in the fresh air and sunshine where they may develop into a nobler race of men and women and build up the ideal civilization with, civilization with peace and goodwill. That's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for ourselves and we're fighting for our children. And you have lit the spark that is lighting a fire all over the world. You have shown working people that there is an answer and that answer is in solidarity. And we stand with you now and always, and we are going to be there one day longer, one day stronger. So if Amazon thinks that they could put that mailbox there, if Amazon thinks that they could intimidate people and they can violate the law because they can just wait out your fire inside your belly to make change in Birmingham, they're wrong. They are dead wrong because we are going to be there and we are going to win. And when we win, we're going to force them to the table. And they're going to have to address your demands. And they're going to have to put it in a contract. And we're going to keep going. And what I'm hearing from flight attendants who were on furlough working in Amazon warehouses all over the country, this place is no way to live. And these people need a union. And how can we help to get it done? So we are with you. One day longer, one day stronger. Cheers to you. Thank you to you. Inspiration to all. Solidarity forever. Yeah, solidarity forever. Solidarity is what this afternoon represents. We have heard from folks who represent union members all over this country. They have declared that they are with the, the, the uh, Bessemer 6000. They are with the courageous workers who are taking a stand, taking a stand for their own lives. So what we have to do all over this country is also stand. If we're not in these unions, we have to have our churches stand. We have to have our, our community groups stand, but everybody has to be in this fight. This is our fight. This is a fight where everybody has to be in and nobody can afford to be out because this fight is gonna change how we all live, especially those of us in the South. Those of us who know that history and need to reclaim it, those of us who are living in a place that we know can change the nation. So today I call on people to get those calls made to their senators, to talk about the Amazon workers, to talk about the PRO Act for God's sakes, and to talk about the rights of workers, and to talk about how we cannot stand this anymore that we are turning a corner in this country, and this is just the beginning. And everybody should know that the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, will put all our force behind the Amazon workers, will put all our forces supporting workers all over this country, and do what we need to do in the 45 states where we have organizing going on today. So I just want to thank everybody, especially my brothers and sisters in the labor movement for coming on. I want to especially thank and honor the workers at, um, at Amazon and want to give special thanks to the brothers and sisters who are at the Poor People's Campaign in Alabama for organizing this, um, this afternoon. So uh, again, this ends this this, uh, this, uh, this, this moral Monday, it does not end our fight. And so all I can say now is forward together, not one step back. Forward together, together not, not one, one step, step back. back. Not one step back. Forward together, together, not one step, one step back. back. Thank you. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We are the people's side. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We are the people's side. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We are the people's side. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? We are the people's side. Alabama was a freedom fighter, and she taught us how to fight. So we gon' fight all day and night until we get it right. What side? Yeah.